The Omicron variant continues to spread in the U.S. with five confirmed cases just in the New York metro area. Mm -hmm. And this comes as President Biden outlined his plan of attack and said that he hopes that the news would spur the unvaccinated into action. Mm -hmm. So we want to bring in Dr. John Weary, the director of the University of Pennsylvania's Institute for Immunology. He's here. Yeah. Hi, doctor. Morning. So uh, yesterday afternoon, I saw this come across the wires that uh, some firm in South Africa did a study of this new variant and they said it's three times, you're three times more likely to get COVID. How, explain that study. Sure, what they did is they looked at people that were previously infected uh, with COVID-19 and asked how likely are they to get infected with this new variant compared to getting reinfected with the previous variants right. that we've seen. Mm -hmm. This new variant looks like it's about three times more likely to cause reinfection in people that previously had COVID. So this is concerning because it means that the immunity that you had from previous infection might not be protecting you as well from this new variant. So they're not finding the antibodies? Then. We haven't looked at antibodies yet. Okay. So this is just looking at the rates of infection. And that mm -hmm. could be a lot of things. It could be that the variant spreads more easily, uh, or it could be that the immunity from previous infection isn't quite as good. Okay. At first blush, that sounded alarming to me. I but think we Maybe should all be concerned is a better word. Yeah, I think we should be concerned. We also saw a cluster of infections in Norway in about 50 people that happened in a population of people that was highly vaccinated. Now, what helps here is most of the reports of people getting infected with this variant that have been previously vaccinated are mild. We don't have enough data yet to say whether infections will be mild or severe, but right now it looks like they're mostly mild. Have you heard about people who have gotten it who are not vaccinated? Is it bad? Uh, really no reports yet. Yeah, it's too early. Not enough research yeah. on that. But it apparently is affecting people and they're concerned because we're seeing an increase in folks who are getting vaccinated now? Yes, that's right. We are seeing an uptick in vaccination and uh, people getting boosters. So that's a, a good sign. Um, remember, we still have a huge wave of Delta in the United States. So we're seeing even the Delta wave go up more and more. Um, so you think it, it, when we started hearing about this new uh, variant. That's that's why you think people are starting. Well, I better get the. I better get vaccinated. I mean, that's one one reason. I think the 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 concern about this new variant is causing people to get vaccinated or get boosted, um, and I think that's useful. With this Delta wave that's still going on in the United States, we need to get our vaccination rates up. We're at about 63 percent of eligible um, Americans are vaccinated, and that's not quite high enough. No, no. Well, there's some people that just don't believe in it at all. Uh, President Biden gave out these. Uh, new uh, guidelines yesterday. Let's put them on the screen. They're, they're, they're kind of like the old ones, but is anything stand out to you there, doctor? Well, there are a couple new things. I think the big one for me is um, making testing available to everybody. Now, it's still going to be a little bit complicated, but you know the rest of the world looks at us and wonders why we're paying for tests. You can walk into any pharmacy in England mm. and just pick up a free test. Here in the United States, they cost 8 to 10 to $12 a test, and that's if you can find them. So one of the big things here is, is the administration said they're going to make tests available for everybody. That's huge. And they're talking about at-home testing as well. At-home right? testing, yeah. that's right. Do you yes. believe in the at-home testing? I or? think they're great. Oh. Yeah. Why? I think Because there was you know, one brand we did do a story on that was were a little faulty, and so they were trying to recall that. But That's right. I think that was a temporary manufacturing problem. Um, what we're yeah. seeing now is that these at-home tests are about 96% accurate. Mm -hmm. um, you may get some false positives, but then you go get it confirmed with a more accurate PCR test. Uh, and you can really know. This is going to be really helpful to keep kids in school, keep people mm -hmm. at work, yeah, yeah. Uh, and make sure that if you're exposed, you really know whether you have COVID or not. So and it's really interesting that other countries are doing it for free because I've paid as much as $70 um, to yes. get COVID tests because there's a difference between the PCR and the rapid, and Listen, it can get. We've been behind so many other countries about health care forever in this country. Uh, editorial. <laughs> yeah, Put up the thing. <laughs> editorial. Are we going to be dealing with this for the rest of our lives? I think it's very likely that this virus is going to become just something we live with. Yeah. Um, we call that becoming endemic. What I think we're heading towards is a, is a place where it's not going to cause severe disease. And so it might be a common cold. It might be a little bit inconvenient. But if you're vaccinated, you're not going to get really sick. Measles? You're not going to end up in the hospital. Well, you know, more like uh, influenza Influ where we, we get okay. vaccinated. Um, it's, you know, if you don't get vaccinated, it can be really concerning but it's going to be around every year. It's COVID in seasons season. instead of just I flu season. We may be saying that. All right. mm. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks for always coming in.